man, that looks tough. From the smoke from my angle, it looks like it's cooking. Another hot summer day. It's fire season. It's time to be ready. All right, copy. I'm not familiar with that, but I'll just send them up in front. And the site on approach to Left Hand Canyon looks all too familiar. Any idea how big or anything yet? Fire officials call this the Maxwell Fire. You're your way in about two. A name that means very little to residents. We have some horses up by uh, marker 14. I copy that. Especially to those like the Days, who lived yeah. through fires by other names before. We went through it last year. Yeah, it's tough. And yet we were just seeing how close the fire was to them. It's hard to believe that just 300 acres could produce so much smoke. Smoke that people who live in the area study. I see the dark smoke, and that to me tells me some kind of structure is going on. Overhead, air platforms offer their support. While on the ground, teams called hot shots gear up. Through two, mobilize, Let's get out of here, off you go. It's their job to put themselves on the fire line. We'll just take a strike team, grab fire at the edge. Those along. who love the canyon know fire is part of it. This is a typical Colorado picnic, you know, you come up and uh, forest fires. It's the part no one can control. Division Alpha training operations, Red 3. Even the best men and women on the front lines. We're working up to the uh, pretty scary. Then you see these guys that actually go up into it. Good copy. They're starting in where my flagging is working up. Very there. impressive. Just off the Colorado University campus, down a flight of stairs, underneath the grow lights, Pierre Warner had a dream. I was going to be the Bellagio of medical marijuana dispensaries. And a problem, security. Well, I guess we are targets. The plan was for Warner to sleep in the back. So this is where the magic happens here. <laughs> right next to his pot plants. And around 5 this morning, he heard a noise. These guys woke me up. Two guys. This glass was broken out. Breaking in. But if they thought that Dr. Reefer, the dispensary, was an easy target. These guys were punks, amateurs. They had no idea they would run into. I am Dr. Reefer. Dr. Reefer himself. Oh, here's one. Dr. Reefer, crime fighter. Warner caught the two thieves in an upstairs engineering office. I've done hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat in prison. As they made a terrible yeah, right. mistake. Oh, I was cooking a chimichanga burrito. It's a stupid punk. Dr. Reefer was armed only with a pipe. Now, not that kind. A big metal one, enough to keep one thief at bay, but not the other. He clocked me right here. The fight was on. Oh, and so it looks really cool if you go with me. <laughs> so, all right, I grabbed him. Bam! Bam! And Dr. Reefer subdued the man who hit him, handing him to the Boulder police. We are concerned about these types of businesses. Are Worried that three marijuana dispensaries have been robbed in just the last month. And the community is going to have to make some decisions about how to handle this. Maybe that's why Warner is sending a message. I think this sends a message to all these punks and robbers and thieves that to stay away from the dispensaries because we'll fight back. Down a flight of stairs where all the grass is growing. All businesses start off with some blood, sweat, and tears. Dr. Reefer is ready to defend his turf. And I just donated my share. <laughs> Thirty plus miles an hour yeah. going around four to six cones per second. Three inches over the ground yeah. is an unreal feeling. This is the United States Championship of uh, slalom skateboard racing. We lost the yet Colorado. Slalom skateboard kind of made a renaissance since the '70s when it was really big. It's back. It's a fairly high level of competition here. 2000, there's been a resurgence globally. So it's made a really big comeback. It's not the kind of skateboarding that people usually think of. And, uh, the racing is just like you'd see in a ski racing course. Yeah, Kevin! It's all about carving the fastest line. We're running a dual format, run head to head, where you do a run on each course. And... Yeah, Pernak! Times are very tight. It's a margin of point two, two seconds. A lot of us in our 40s, because we were way into it in the 70s and 80s. Hill is really fast. And brought a lot of young kids up into the sport. There's a lot of adrenaline running through your body, and it's really frightening, but more fun than scary. People carving hard lines, pushing traction to the limits, and going very, very fast. Team forces going around the turns, just phenomenal. We're seeing you guys push the limits here. It's crazy. Nobody likes getting a speed. 
ticket. Lane number one, 73 miles an hour. It's a he got me for 73 and a 55. Lane one. Which I was definitely going too fast. This guy's moving, 70 plus. Got me! <laughs> Red car going to lane number two, 74 miles an hour. Single. I'm a contributor today. <laughs> it didn't take us long to find drivers speeding along Interstate 25. Hello, it's your license. Just north of I-70, where the speed limit is 55. Lane number one, pickup truck, 75. According to Denver records, this is one of the most ticketed areas in the city. 72 miles an hour, lane one. Quick as almost I can pull the trigger right now, I'm getting speeders. Sergeant Kevin Edling can pick out speeders even before he raises the laser. They look like they're doing about 65. And I came up and I'm 67. Once he pinpoints a speeder and confirms it with a laser. 73. He radios his partners waiting to pull over the drivers. We had that many speeders in less than three minutes. I had four bikes here. I have to wait till my motorcycles come back so we can afford some more speed. My proudest moments caught on film. Sarah Lawless is stopped for going 16 miles over the speed limit. You're going 71. I wanted to ask her if she knew how fast she was going. She said pretty fast. I said, well, that's true. Just one of 41 drivers pulled over in just 90 minutes. As busy as this location is, it's not even number one. The top spot on our list is Pena Boulevard, just past E-470 on the way out to the airport. Last year, Denver police caught more than 4,000 speeders here. The number two spot on our list is 2500 West 29th Avenue, near Spear in Zunai, in the school zone. And last year, Denver police handed out 1,577 tickets here. Number three on our list is our location at I-25, just north of Interstate 70, where police handed out 1,500 58 tickets. We're receiving a citation today for speeding. The number four spot on our list is I-70 in Pecos, where Denver police wrote 1,344 speeding tickets last year. Finally, number five on our list, I-70 at 225. Denver police caught 1,296 people speeding through here. They kind of stink, but I guess you can follow the speed limit, and if you go over the speed limit, you're going to get pulled over. Some drivers are understanding. 65. No, it's 55. Others argue they're just going with the flow of traffic. If you're doing 55, you better be in the right side parked because everybody's going 70 miles an hour, day in and day out. Still other drivers complain. But you're going 71 and a 55. This is just a way to raise money for the city. I think it's ridiculous. What's the point other than to generate revenues? If there is a genuine concern for safety, then yes, I'll appreciate that, but I, I think they're motivated in other ways. I mean, a speed trap's a speed trap, I'm no dummy. But officers say it's all about slowing people down and preventing accidents. Average vehicle weight now is over 3,000 pounds. So basically a 3,000 pound missile going down the interstate system. If we can get them to slow down, then we're winning the battle against serious injuries and death. But they know they have a long road ahead of them. 93 miles an hour in a crotch rocket lane one coming at you. The more time you spend out here, the more you shake your head like, no, that can't be right. That can't be true. 93 miles an hour. The I would love to be put out of business. Well, let's see. Have a good day. I don't think we're going to have any shortage of speeders anytime in the near future.